Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, it actually is my day off, but I'm being pushed, gently pushed, and inspired to just sit down and hit record and um, talk about confidence and confidence within your mediumship and your relationship with the spirit world. Um, as I sit here and I've already hit record, I'm, I'm sort of being pushed to just talk about what you're doing to yourself and what you're doing with your connection with the spirit world, your spirit guides, and the spirit communicator within the mediumship reading um, when you get nervous or when you have doubts or when your confidence starts to waver a bit. What you're really doing is when you have this fear, perhaps, of being wrong or being called out, or perhaps there are old religious beliefs you have in, that were instilled in you as, as a child, which um, I think a lot of us can relate to in terms of the church and all that with conjuring up the dead and speaking with, with, um, with people that have passed and the devil and all that stuff. It might be really deep down inside, but fear or doubt or lack of confidence and this lack of confidence and this doubt, I don't really think it's really involved directly with your mediumship and your relationship with the spirit world, but you might be bringing these things um, that you haven't healed from as a child or, or even from yesterday. We all have to work on our own healing. I know within my journey and my development, when I would do go into do readings and, and during my development and for practice, I would get really nervous and I would start really stammering and I would visibly shake. My, my legs would shake and I would get really nervous. I was never really um, comfortable being seen. And this all stems from, from childhood stuff that we all have. Um, about not being seen and not being heard and not allowed to speak or or express my, my true wishes and desires. So I really brought a lot of that into the readings with me. So it had nothing to do with not thinking the spirit world didn't show up because what I do know for a fact is spirit always shows up when we show up. The spirit world always shows up when we show up. They want to help us. They want to work with us. They want to help with our development and our abilities and to help strengthen our connection with them, to bring through their evidence of so-called death, philosophy, wisdom into the physical world. I know that. I've been told that enough and I feel it all the time. But because we're people and we're also living in this physical world during our physical manifestation, we, we have pain, we have hurt, we have things that we need to heal from and if we don't fully acknowledge and shine light on these issues, it really creates this lack of self-confidence, this doubt, this not believing in ourselves. So when you're in a reading and you're the medium and you're sitting there in front of your sitter or on a platform, which can actually be way more anxiety provoking, you can freeze up and you can get into your head and you're like, oh, I don't feel a connection. I feel nothing. I'm so bad. There's no spirit. I, I, I can't do this. I'm making it up. And right away... You're putting up these blocks of doubt, of lack of confidence, of not believing in yourself, of fear, of all these things are now in your energy. And so you're making it doubly as hard for the spirit world to get through. It's hard enough for them to get through because they have to lower their vibration into our realm as we hopefully are raising our vibration. But if we're supposed to raise our vibration by this doubt and this fear and this lack of confidence, that automatically pulls your energy and your frequency vibrations down. So you're making it really hard for the spirit world to get through. So in saying that you're nervous or feeling this nervous energy and feeling this doubt, you're actually making it worse. So you just have to understand that all of these things that you're fearing that are going to happen, not getting a contact, not bringing through someone that a sitter can recognize. Just these thoughts alone sort of create this reality because you have to go into a reading thinking, I am a channel for the spirit world. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with my feeling, with my doubts. So you have to do all of the self-work and shine light on these doubts, on these fears, on this lack of self-confidence, all these things, and sort of start to heal yourself. No, are we ever fully healed? No, we're not. We're human. We, we, we aren't. But I think just getting on the path of healing, self-healing, just brings light into it so you can move forward and just understand, ah, 
this feeling of nervousness, it's not coming from working with spirit. It's coming from me. It's not coming from spirit. So the spirit world wants to work through you. The sitter is coming to hear their loved ones through you. They're not coming to be with you for as gorgeous and as engaging as you might be as a person. It's not about you. Okay, I talked about this, I believe, in my last video about feeling the emotions of the, 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 the spirit communicator. So it's sort of the same lines. It's not about you. You just have to feel it and give it. But when the feeling is coming, this, that's really quite a hindrance of fear or doubt, that just pulls you down. And it, you, the evidence and the information and the power of spirit cannot flow through you easily. You want to be a clear and pure channel for the spirit world to bring their energy through you into the physical world. The spirit world have no power and no voice in this world without us. It's a partnership, okay? So how do you build your confidence? You build your confidence first by understanding the spirit world does not make mistakes. If you're on this path, you're on this path for a reason. And if you keep your intentions pure to be of service, because that's what we're doing, we're being of service to the spirit world, God, and humanity to help them within this physical world to use us as a channel, conduit, to bring into this, this physical realm. And if you keep this intention of being of service with the desire of helping people, they will just be able to use you easier. And the minute you also set this intention to be of service, you'll have hundreds, if not thousands, of beautiful spirit beings with you, helping you, supporting you, pushing you forward, pulling you forward, removing obstacles from your path. Not challenges, because you need challenges, they're opportunities to learn, but you 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 feel their support. They will help you. When I'm what what I learned a long time ago is that when I would go up and I would feel this this nervous energy, I would just have to say, okay, this this energy that I'm feeling, this nervousness it's a hindrance to my mediumship. It's a hindrance to allowing the spirit world to work through me. What is it? What I am I feeling so nervous? It has nothing to do with spirit. It has to do with me. So as soon as I say that, the nerves start to die down because I'm not this abandoned child anymore. I'm an adult man and I can create my own reality at this point in my life. So it has nothing to do with my past. It has to do with the present. Okay. The only thing I can control at the moment is my mediumship. How often am I sitting with spirit? How often am I honoring and feeling my own spirit? How often am I meditating? How often am I practicing? How often, how often am I working with, with the spirit world on helping them develop me? Okay. So the more you can just do this, slow steps, slow drips, spirit works very slow. I don't have any of my notes with me because this was a spontaneous video, but there's a quote, which I'm going to paraphrase from Silver Birch. Spirit, spirit wisdom has to be slow. Step by step, drip by drip. You might, when obstacles occur or challenges happen, which they do, when doubts occur, which they must, the power of the spirit will help you move forward. But we need, we, we, we need these, this patience with ourselves and the spirit world to allow them to develop us on their time frame. It's not our time frame. It's the spirit world's time frame, which is really difficult to understand and to accept because we want things quick. That's the way our society works in modern times. We want everything fast. It's all instant gratification. That's not the way the spirit world works. So building your confidence takes time, but give spirit and yourself the gift of your confidence and your patience and allow them to work with you. Allow them to help build your confidence. How do you build your confidence? Practice. Keep practicing. The more you practice, the better you get. The better you get, the more your confidence builds. I have the honor and pleasure of working with a lot of people. I can teach them technique. My, the techniques that work for me were all different. Hopefully it resonates with them. If it doesn't, they have to find their own techniques. That's the way it works. We're all, we're all different. We're all unique. But I can't teach anyone confidence. I can teach them that they just need to keep going and work through their doubts and work through their fears, and then they'll find the confidence. But you just have to keep going. Don't give up. Don't let your doubts control you. Don't let your fear guide your development. Allow your spirit 
to guide your development. What has really helped me is also just sitting in the power. It's not a sitting in the power meditation or video. I do have that. I might link that into this video. I, I do have a sitting in the power meditation that I recorded a long time ago that I, I, I give to anyone who wants it at this point. So, but I found the more that I sat in the power, um, the easier it was for me to find my power and, and build my confidence rather fast. You have to sit with it and you do, there are sitting in the power meditations that are like an hour, some are like five minutes, some are about 20. I believe this video that I'll, that I'll link is about 20 minutes. That's a good time. But the more you just sit and, and go within, feel your own spirit, feel your own power, sit with your own essence and hear the language of your own spirit. Allow your spirit to speak with you and then build your power, build it, expand it. Build it through your entire body, through your entire being. Build it out into the physical world. Blend and meld with the power and energy of our earth and all that walk and live upon it. Make, build it bigger to go into the universe. And then connect with God and sit with God. And sitting in the power is really about taking your plug and putting it in the socket of, of the universe, of, of the great spirit, whatever you want to call it, and just topping up your power. Okay, but I found by learning how to sit in my power, and at this point, I can bring up my power pretty much like that by just um, building like a bubble of light within and then around and then out. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. And I found by sitting in my power and recognizing my own power, then I'm responsible for my own power. I use my power now within everyday life. Everything works better for me now that I found my power and I'm able to control and expand my power when I need it. It's just life becomes easier when you understand you have the power. Okay. It's like that quote from Glenda, Glenda from the good, good witch that she, um, to Dorothy that she always had the power, but she had to find it for herself. So this is what I really do believe. Okay. That we all have it, but we have to understand it and feel it for ourselves. Whether it means just understanding your own spirit, and understanding we, we each hold the light of God within our spirit and we can expand this light and nurture this light and honor this light and really make it as big as we want it to be by just focusing on it and visualizing it bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when you can really expand your power, then your energy just naturally goes up, your frequency goes up. And then the doubts and the lack of confidence really do start to fade away. So all this self-work you can do with an understanding your behavior and your belief systems that might have been, you know, sort of implanted in your mind when you were a child or an adolescent or even from yesterday, who knows, um, and just saying it's really not about me at this moment in my life and it's nothing to do with my spiritual progression and my connection with the spirit world. But you have to get through all this. You have to understand that these doubts and fears are, are doing nothing but hurting your um, relationship with the spirit world. And it's your responsibility and it's your job to examine this and sort of heal through it and then emerge as a healed person at that moment. Until something else comes along that you have discovered within yourself that you have to heal as well, you always will. We're always in, on some level of, of healing. But I think just taking the step and beginning your healing journey just changes everything. Okay, So it's really about the confidence and, and, and the trust. Trust in yourself and trust in spirit. Spirit will never let you down. Spirit does not make any mistakes. You're on this path for a reason. God would never put you into a place to fail. God would never put you into a place to, um, to hurt you. It might be uncomfortable. Growth is uncomfortable. But that's part of the deal. We learn more from being uncomfortable than we do from just sitting in one space and staying comfortable. That, that's true. Okay? But just have faith in yourself. Have faith in spirit. Trust yourself. Trust spirit. Trust God. And give them the gift of your confidence. And you will see. They will guide you out of perhaps right now, which might feel like a dark place for you of just really freaking out when you have to read and not getting anything or getting really quiet and really trying too hard. You shouldn't really have to try too hard when you're reading. I find that if you can just allow it to flow and just not get too involved with your conscious mind and just allow the information to be 
transferred from spirit through your spirit to their loved ones sitting in front of you and just be with the information don't it's not your evidence it's their evidence and you're just this this vessel this channel okay so don't get so involved with what they're saying i try not to think about what the spirit world is telling me because my mind kicks on the, the mind is a whole other video um how to control that but you can you really have to understand that the mind does not like to be passive, but it does require a passive mind to work with spirit fully, I find. And you do you train your mind to be passive by meditating, by sitting in the power, by um, understanding the subconscious more. But that's a slow process as well. Okay, so I hope that helps. But confidence, confidence, confidence. There's no trick to it. It just takes time. But once you build your confidence and your trust in yourself in the spirit world, it becomes magical. It becomes glorious. So give yourself the gift of your confidence and you will see everything change. I promise. Okay. Have a good day and thank you. Bye.